Mookie Betts was as tired of the Dodgers struggles as we were. He said, Hey, I'm just going to take things on my own and get us a win. And he did. Let's talk Dodgers. Let's get locked on Dodgers. You are locked on Dodgers, your daily Los Angeles Dodgers podcast, part of the locked on podcast network, your team every day. Hey, Dodger fans, this is Locked On Dodgers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks to our everydayers for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen every weekday morning. Remember, this show is free and available on all podcast platforms and on YouTube simply by searching for Locked On Dodgers. So please subscribe wherever you're watching or listening right now. If this is your first time with us, I am Jeff Snyder. That guy next to me, that's my co-host, Vince Semperio. Vince and I are both lifelong Dodger fans, just like a lot of you, and we've also both spent time covering the Dodgers in the press box and the locker room over the past decade, so we're not quite insiders, but we bring you the smart fans' perspective on our boys in blue every weekday morning. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. And uh, getting started, Vince, uh, Mookie Betts. Got the Dodgers started today, uh, singled and scored in the first inning, and then said, I'm going to get four more hits this game. Uh, drove in two runs, scored another run later in the game. Uh, five for five. It was his third career five-hit game. Just basically uh, seemed like he decided, uh, I'm going to, I'm just going to put this losing, not quite a losing streak, but a slump for the team. I'm going to, I'm going to take care of that. I'm going to get things done. And, uh, and it seemed to rub off because the rest of the lineup contributed pretty well too. But uh, Mookie was definitely the star of this game. Yeah, definitely the star. You know, off to a, a hot start, hit a little bit of a of a cold, you know, not cold streak, maybe a lukewarm streak, uh, but turned it back on, you know, back here at Dodger Stadium. And yeah, I mean, getting things started right off the bat with the base hit in that first inning. You know, Shohei follows it up with the hit. Uh, you know, they end up loading the bases with nobody out and only get one run out of it, uh, which is not ideal, but they kept on keeping on. Uh, they ended up, you know, letting Cor Patrick Corbin pitch into the seventh inning in the year 2024, not ideal, but scoring runs off of him and putting up enough runs to make a bullpen game be a little bit more uh, tolerable was definitely ideal. And, and for Mookie, I mean, it, it's one of those where we talked about it he hasn't had much chance with runners in scoring position and he got a couple of those chances last night and he took advantage. And a couple of the times he was the one getting on base in order to try to get in scoring position or getting in scoring position for the guys behind him. So this offense goes when the top of the order goes uh, yesterday, it was mostly just Mookie going, but that was enough to carry the Dodgers. Yeah. And, and Patrick Corbin, like, Getting deep in the game isn't really his problem. I mean, he he does that pretty well. Like last year, he made 32 starts, pitched 180 innings. So, you know, averaged nearly six innings per start. Uh, this Tonight, he went six and a third. Uh, so kind of the, the problem for, for him the last three plus seasons now has been that the, the, the quantity is there, but not the quality. And that's what we saw here tonight. The Dodgers, you know, in six and a third innings, Dodgers scored five runs on him. Uh, so his ERA actually went down from, 844 down to 806. Uh, so, you know, I mean, the Dodgers treated him like Patrick Corbin. It was roughly what the Nationals have come to expect where, yeah, I'll give you innings, but they're not going to be any good. Yeah. And, you know, again, they were a base hit away from getting him probably out in the first two, three innings. Um, you know, a couple of base, maybe a couple of base hits away from for sure getting them out in those first three innings. But again, six runs is good enough for this Dodger team to get the win. And that's what they did. And, and you know, Mookie leading the way. Uh, it, it's fun. You know, the, the Dodgers, they did get the one home run today from Kike. But I know I've already started to see the, oh, this team can't score unless they're hitting home runs, which I don't think is necessarily true. They have scored, you know, runs a lot of the times and most you know, Teo and, and Mookie have some homers. Tani has a couple, but other than that, there's not too much uh, on the power side for the Dodgers. So, you know, Will Smith has what one, Freddie Freeman has one. I mean, they're not necessarily putting up the runs with home runs. And, you know, that that's a, a, a testament to getting guys on base. And like I said, they might overall appear to struggle with runners in scoring position, but when you have so many chances at it, you're bound to 
remember when they don't get the hits and maybe, you know, not remember as much when they do get the hits. Yeah, I think I made this point. I don't think it was this show. I think it was when I was on the postcast with Pete. Uh, by the way, if you haven't checked out the Locked on Dodgers postcast after most Dodger games, Pete Fox is uh, doing a postcast uh, live on the Locked on Sports Los Angeles YouTube channel immediately after the game. Uh, not every game, but most games. So anyway, I, I was on that with him recently, and I was talking about that runners with scoring, uh, runners in scoring position. Most of the time, if you look at the end of the year at the leaderboards for uh, runners left on base, uh, the teams at the top of that list are also the teams at the top of the run scored list because the way you usually end up leaving runners on base is by getting a bunch of runners on base, and that's also how you score a bunch of runs. So most of the time, because like if you get four hits in an inning and leave two guys on, but two guys score, you know, you'll take that. And if you do that every inning, you're going to score 18 runs and leave 18 guys on base. And uh, one of those numbers is really good and the other one's irrelevant. And, uh, you know, it's kind of the same with runners of scoring position and, and, you know, the percentage of runs scored on home runs. It's like, that's always overblown too. Look at raw numbers. If the Dodgers are scoring a bunch of runs in a lot of different ways, it doesn't matter if their percentage of runs scored on home runs is a little bit higher because that means they're hitting a lot of home runs too. And a lot of times if you don't hit a home run, well, it's probably a double or, uh sacrifice fly you know there's i'll take a home run and uh the dodgers yeah this team e even in previous years when it's always been a talking point it's always been overblown uh but in in this game what we saw was if you get good pitching and good offense you're going to win games and the good pitching has been something that has been lacking a little bit recently and the dodgers got that kyle hurt got himself into trouble and got bailed out by some bad base running uh it seemed like uh cj abrams slowed down because his helmet was falling off and then was out on a bang bang play at home plate. Maybe at the third base coach had noticed that he slowed down. He would have stopped. It seemed like Abrams thought that he was going to be stopped at third. Yeah. While he was slowing down. Uh, so he got thrown out. So Kyle Hurt sometime, somehow allowed two singles, a double, and a stolen base in the first inning and no runs. Um, and, and the only real downside of that was that because he got into trouble, Ryan Yarbrough had to start warming up in the first inning, which meant that even though Hurt wasn't near his pitch count, they pulled him after two innings because Yarbrough was warm and you're not going to sit him down when he's your bolt guy. Uh, but Yarbrough came in and gave up a two-run homer early and then ended up pitching, what, five five yeah, innings? Five. Two runs? We'll, we'll take that, you know. that that's uh, So between Hurt and Yarbrough, you got seven innings and two runs uh, for your kind of starters. Your, your bolt guys, and then uh, uh, a Joe Kelly uh, inning that was very Joe Kelly, and then a Daniel Hudson inning that was pretty Daniel Hudson. So, you know, uh, we'll take it. And good hitting, good pitching, you win a game. Yeah, and, you know, you kind of look at how I mentioned Mookie coming up, but you see bottom of the order has been what's been an issue and why we've seen Mookie Betts and Otani and, and haven't been the guys that have had – Renders in scoring position as often as some other players in the middle of that order. And you saw, you know, Andy Pajes gets on. He ends up scoring in his major league debut. First first pitch he sees, he hits a single to right field. Miguel Rojas on base three times, scores twice. Like, that's really all you have to do is just get on base for that top of the order. And either Mookie or Shohei or Freddie, you know, even if they're not going right, they're bound to be right more often than not, or maybe not more often than not. But uh, in the baseball sense of it more often than not. And that's really all you need. And that's kind of the contributions that came in. Obviously it was a big today because Mookie was the one on fire and he was the one that had runners on base a couple times. Yeah. And even Freddie Freeman didn't get any hits, but he did walk three times, you know, uh, every spot in the lineup got on base, uh, even Chris Taylor's spot. And then he immediately got himself picked off. Uh, <laughs> but we're going to talk more. I mean, I think you just said Andy Paul has Andy Paz is on the team. Yeah. Oh yeah. Andy Paul has is on the team. We're going to dig into that. The, our, we are officially in our Andy Pajes era. He got called up. He started. We're going to talk about the plan for him, what that means for others. So thank you for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen every weekday morning. And please continue to keep it Locked On Dodgers. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than 3 million members. It's the easiest and most exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more or less on two or more player stats and watch the winnings roll in. Spring training is spring training is over and baseball season is officially underway, so don't miss your chance to add your favorite players from the diamond in your Prize Picks entries. Whether it's strikeouts, RBIs, or first inning runs, take your pick of more or less and add them to your Prize Picks entry today. Prize Picks is the best way to get action on sports in more than 30 states across the country, including California, Texas, and Georgia. 
Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of player stat, players and stat types are what make Prize Picks the number one fantasy sports app. Download the Prize Picks app today and use code Locked On MLB, all lowercase, for a first deposit match up to $100. And that's promo code Locked On MLB in the Prize Picks app for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. This episode is also brought to you by Monopoly Go. Guys, I need you all to listen up for this huge announcement. I have been tracking the leaderboards every day, keeping my eye on the scores, putting all my heart into it, and I am super pumped to announce that I am pretty darn close to the top. And that's right. Obviously, I'm talking about the hit mobile game Monopoly Go. You've probably heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great mobile twist on classic Monopoly, and you can play anywhere, anytime. You explore hundreds of Monopoly boards from Las Vegas to Camelot to the moon, all while raking in a huge fortune charge rent on iconic properties just like classic monopoly you can charge your friends rent on your iconic properties or go after their monopoly money by pulling bank heists and taking wrecking balls to their landmarks but my favorite part is the leaderboards where leaderboards where you can see who's a monopoly tycoon and who's gone bankrupt so get yourself on the charts download monopoly go now free on the app store and google play It's locked on NFL, locked on's NFL mock draft live on April 17th at 7 Eastern time, streaming on the Locked On Sports Today 24 7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Find the ultimate six episode series on April 17th at 7 o'clock Eastern time to hear who the local locked on experts are picking for every NFL franchise with live reactions from local college football experts and even the fantasy football angle. The Locked On NFL Mock Draft on April 17th at 7 Eastern Time, streaming live on Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. We want to thank our everydayers for being with us every weekday morning. If you're not an everydayer, it's easy to become one. Just watch or listen every weekday morning. And the easiest way to do that is to subscribe wherever you're watching or listening right now. We love our subscribers. We love our everydayers. And we love our Locked On Dodgers insiders. You can become one of those by going to joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Dodgers. It's a text text message-based service where we uh, keep you abreast of all the latest news and rumors and whatever. There was a lot going on in the Insiders Club today with all the roster moves that we're going to talk about over the next two segments of this episode. So if you want to be an insider, just go to uh, join subtext.com slash locked on Dodgers. And the most excited, the first one we heard about and the most exciting uh, early this morning, I was in my car in the drive through at the donut place, picking up some donuts uh, to take to my wife's coworkers. And uh I, while I was waiting in the drive-thru, I pulled out my phone and saw that Francis Romero had tweeted that the Dodgers were calling up Andy Paez. And we, we kind of felt like this was coming, maybe not today, but it did seem like it was, it was pretty soon. And, you know, we talked yesterday, Vince, about how it seemed like, uh, Taylor Trammell getting to get a couple at bats on Jackie Robinson day seemed kind of like his farewell or, you know, hopefully a see you later if he clears waivers, uh, after being DFA'd. Uh, and goes to Oklahoma City. Maybe he'll be back, but seemed like his time with the big league club was drawing to a close. And Andy Paw has made a lot of sense to be the guy to replace him. Uh, but it was still exciting, even if we we weren't shocked by it. We were still very excited to hear the news that Paw has was being called up. Yeah, it was. I actually had to be up super early to take my girlfriend to the airport, so I was back home and took took another little nap to get some that rest. I woke up about 30 minutes after all the news had to come out about Pajes and, you know, exciting at the time for sure. And yeah, we, we've been obviously had a couple of segments already about why he should be getting called up. And, you know, with the setback to Jason Hayward, that is going to put him out at least two, three weeks more. You got to imagine, cause now he needs a rehab assignment. Uh, and with Tramiel having, having not played and then playing and striking out twice that, to me, that was one of the signs I was like, okay, I think they're getting close to, to moving on from Tramel. And with, you know, Taylor not hitting, Kike, you know, he did homer last night, but he hasn't really been hitting. There's a spot available for somebody to play the outfield on a somewhat consistent basis. And now we know who that's going to be. It's going to be Andy Pajas. And Dave Roberts said as much that he's going to play against righties and lefties. He's going to get some runway here the next two, three weeks uh, until Hayward is back and maybe even beyond that if he uh, performs. So did you find out about the Pajas news from our Insiders Club, the text message? I did. 
Nice. I figure you'd see your text before you see Twitter. That's the benefit of being a Locked On Dodgers insider. Uh, that's how he, that's how Vince gets his Dodgers news is stuff that I tweet out to the Insiders Club folks. Uh, yeah, you know it it made sense. You know we've talked about this a few times that when you have a top prospect like this, you don't want to call him up to sit on the bench. And, and it's you have to find a balance because there's some things about being a big leaguer that you can only find out by playing in the big leagues. You know, we've talked about that with pitching, you know, Kyle hurt. We saw it a little bit in his performance today that like, he, he's not going to get, he, you're not going to get the same swings from big leaguers that you get from guys in triple a or double a. Uh, and, and so learning to pitch in the big leagues, it, you have to do it in the big leagues to learn it. And that's why there's growing pains. It happens to everybody pretty much. Uh, and same thing with hitting. So you do want to get guys up, but you don't want to call up a top prospect uh, to be the right-handed hitting half of a platoon who only plays twice a week. And so once the that's why when the Dodgers didn't call Pajes up when Hayward originally went on the IL because they had Chris Taylor and they they thought that it would be a short-term thing for Hayward. Now that it's going to be a longer-term thing and uh, Chris Taylor has kind of <laughs> proven that he's not currently a good option, um, yeah, Pajes is ready to come up, and, and he's probably going to play five out of every six games for the next few weeks. Uh, he'll get an occasional day off, but for the most part, Andy Pajes is going to be your regular right fielder. Uh, and, you know, he started in center field in this game because James Outman had the day off, but then when Outman did pinch hit and come into the game, Outman shift, went to center, Pajes shifted over to right, and Teoscar shifted over to left. So you figure most of the time, uh, at least against right-handed pitching, that'll be your your setup, uh, Tay Oscar in left, Outman in center, and Pajas in right. And yeah, right field is kind of, I, I think, probably his best spot anyway. Uh, he's got the arm for it. And yeah, it, it, it's exciting. And he liked to uh, make it exciting. He came up for his first at bat and swung at the first pitch and lined it into right field for a base hit. And uh, ended up being his only hit. He went one for four, hit another ball really hard. And he struck out looking one time and struck out swinging one time. Uh, but even those were, we're good at bats. Uh, he didn't look overmatched, even though he did strike out twice. Uh, and, and the line drive right at the center fielder that had, I think it was like a 470 expected batting average. He hit it 103 miles an hour. So hit the ball well and looked like he was comfortable playing in the big leagues. Yeah. I mean, even out there in center field wasn't the most difficult play ever, but it was a play going up against the wall and he, and he made it and, you know, made it look relatively easy. And that's something I know, uh, that was a concern before kind of body and everything else in terms of defensive value. And, you know, eventually maybe he needs to move to first in DH, but, you know, if he can come up and start in center field on the, on the Dodgers, uh, realistically, he's going to have at least, a, you know, I would imagine a year, more than a year, a couple years worth of, of time being able to, you know, hold down center field when needed, play the corner outfielders more, most of the time. And then, you know, hopefully remain out there uh, for, for the better part of it. But yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's exciting to get some, you know, it, it it's very, very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Entitled or, or some to that extent as of us as Dodger fans kind of be like, oh man, you know, we're already in, it's April 16th and we already feel like we're a little bit of a slosh and there's a bunch of guys getting hurt and pitchers and a bunch of moving around and, you know, we need an injection of some energy and, you know, Andy Pies could be that guy. And, and it's realistically, um, you know, it, it's going to make sense for him to get this runway now and, and see what he can do. And he could be a reason the Dodgers, you know, don't need to make a trade at the deadline or can focus on other things at the deadline. If he can come up and, and contribute on a regular basis and show some of that power he's shown in spring and, and you know, first couple of weeks in the minors. Yeah, he, he, it's going to be fun to watch. And like you said, Robert said he's going to get the runway and, we we talked about it the other day, you know, guys like Cody Bellinger and Corey Seager took that runway and said, all right, that's it. You know, uh, Yasiel Puig, same thing back in 2013. Like he was a phenom and just, you know, never looked back. Well, until a year and a half later and then did a lot of looking back. But uh, it was, yeah, it's exciting. And we don't know if Andy Pajes is going to stick like Cody Bellinger did or like Corey Seager did. Uh, but at least body language and eye test. He doesn't look overmatched. He looks ready for the big leagues. And uh, it was, I feel bad for Chris Taylor, but he's the guy most affected by this because Chris Taylor's playing time 
is going to go down a lot. Uh, and, and you know, he and he and Kike Hernandez probably both because probably some spot starts that would have gone to Kike uh, will now go to Taylor uh, sometimes because they're not going to – Kike would have been playing the outfield a lot, and now they're going to have to find him starts in the infield, and that's where Taylor will start too once in a while. So, yeah, you know, we'll see what happens. But uh, Taylor, hopefully he can get things worked out with his swing, figure things out. He struck out twice against Patrick Corbin. He did walk once, although he tried his best not to. It, it swung at a 3-0 and pitch that was a foot below the zone um and you know did work the walk and then got himself picked off uh before pa has had a chance to even see a pitch that at bat and so pa has had to wait till the next inning yeah i i don't know like chris taylor has had slumps before i don't know that he's ever had a slump like this and he's definitely never had a slump like this at 33 years old and so you know some at some point every guy is done being a good baseball player and I'm not saying Chris Taylor is done being a good baseball player, but I'm also not super confident that he's not done, you know? Yeah. So uh, a lot of other roster moves be besides Andy Pajes that we will dig into. Uh, interesting stuff, really. So thank you again for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen, and please continue to keep it Locked On Dodgers. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 win or lose. You can bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that's safe, secure, and easy to use. If you're a Lakers fan, like a lot of Dodger fans are, Lakers will be playing the top seed in the playoffs uh, in the first round, and so... You know what? If you've got a you got a hunch that the Lakers are going to shock the world and shock the Nuggets, you know what? You've got 150 bucks in bonus bets to play with there. Nothing to lose there. So what are you waiting for? Visit fanduel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Thank you again for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen every weekday morning. If you're not an everyday -er, please become one. Just watch or listen every weekday morning. Also, please go beyond the podcast and become a Locked On Dodgers insider by going to joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Dodgers. And be sure to check out Locked On Sports Today and Locked On Sports Los Angeles, the two 24-7 streaming channels over on YouTube from the Locked On Podcast Network. And uh, I guess first, Vince, I got to ask you in that FanDuel ad read I just did, did I uh, did I get my basketball stuff right? Uh, Nuggets are the two seed, but okay, but they were like they're the returning champ, so it okay. feels like the one close seed. enough. All right, yeah. and uh, I was trying to think of an old timey <laughs> Denver Nuggets player, but I couldn't think of one, so um, that's all right. Yeah. Um, the uh, but the Lakers are the underdogs in that series, so oh, yeah, you, you can make some good money with your bonus bets if you have a hunch and get it right, betting on the Lakers. So that's all I was saying. Um, the uh, our insiders got some other text messages today because uh, a lot of roster moves ended up happening. We knew that Landon Knack would be getting called up eventually. Um, did that one? Not yet. That one hasn't officially happened yet. Uh, we we also talked yesterday about how most likely Nick Ramirez and Ricky Venasco would both get sent down because they both pitched two innings on Monday. That happened. And when we heard that Pye has call, getting called up, we figured that Taylor Trammell would be DFA to make room for him. That happened. And Trammell being DFA'd meant there is an open spot on the 40 man roster. And so the Dodgers called up a guy whose last name is Salazar, uh, Eduardo Salazar, uh, who pitched in spring training just a little bit for the Dodgers, didn't pitch extremely well, pitched in the big leagues last year for the Reds a little bit and not extremely well, although he did get his only career win against the Dodgers in that game with the Reds when. Caleb Ferguson came in with a eight to six lead in the ninth inning and went what walk single pop up walk walk hit batter to tie the game and then Shelby Miller came in and gave up the walk off hit uh, to lose the game. Eduardo Salazar got the win in that game. Now he is one of us and he is on the roster. Uh, he he I saw him standing up in the bullpen, maybe thrown a little bit, but. Uh, I think if the Dodgers had put up another run or two in the bottom of the eighth, he might have gotten the ninth inning. Instead, with only a four-run lead, it went to Daniel Hudson. Uh, Salazar seems surely 
to be a short-term guy. They won't have to DFA him because he does have options available, um, but he might even go back to the minors without even getting in a game, uh, possibly because he could be the corresponding move for Landon Knack today, uh, for today's day game that Landon Knack will be pitching in, although I haven't thought much about that. you What do you think? Who's, who's going down for Landon Knack? Yeah, I mean, we're going to talk about Kyle Hurt in this segment, and we both – kind of believe her won't be going down right now that they wouldn't waste a second option on April 16th already unless there's plans of okay at one point we're going to bring him up and he's going to stay up the rest of the season so I guess that's possible Salazar did he he's never started a game in the majors he was starting for OKC he had made three starts uh, average about five innings a start if I'm not mistaken and uh, pitched relatively well there so Again, it, it's a matter of I think they got enough from everyone, you know, Hurt and, and Yarbrough combining for seven. You only had to use Joe Kelly and, and Daniel Hudson. You got, you know, a lot of guys ready to go on Wednesday, even if Knack doesn't get deep into the game. So we could see Salazar go back down uh, and just, you know, kind of get the free trip out of it in, in the day on the roster. But, yeah, I mean, I don't really know what else they could do, I guess, it wouldn't make sense if Vesia goes down right now when he's like a fresh arm. So. Yeah, yeah, and that's the thing. Like that, that would be the argument in favor of sending Hurt back down. Is he he's not available? But when when you figure they they only used uh, they only used four pitchers in this game on Tuesday, uh, only two of their you know regular one inning relievers. Landon Knack, uh, Dave Roberts confirmed he will be starting the day game on Wednesday. Uh, and, and, you know, if they get four innings from him, they've got enough arms to get through, probably get through the game. Uh, and so they don't necessarily need to send Hurt down because then Hurt only threw like 25 pitches. And so he has Wednesday off and then off day on Thursday. He'd be ready on Friday or Saturday to go a couple innings again if that's what they choose to do. The only... I and the argument in favor of sending him down would be we want him to still be a starting pitcher, and so we don't want him to come up here and have the irregular schedule and, and only a couple innings at a time. Uh, you and I have talked about that plenty, about how we think that Hurt is going to be a reliever long-term, and so he might as well jump into that role. Um, but, yeah, it is kind of tricky because there is no obvious answer for who to send down. Whether it's, So it's it's got to be either Salazar or Hurt or – uh, speaking of hurt, maybe somebody uh, tweaked something. You know, if, if Joe Kelly, you know, if Joe Kelly threw what close to thirty pitches in his one inning, you know, yeah. it, may, it it wouldn't be shocking. Uh, we've seen Joe Kelly have injuries before, and and I'm not even talking about phantom injury. I'm talking about you know when you look at Joe Kelly unable to throw a strike at times. Well, maybe there's something going on. Um, that's you know total speculation, but it, it's never surprising when somebody who we haven't really even thought about turns out they're on the injured list because there's an injury we didn't think about. Um, but yeah, we do know Landon Knack will be called up to start on Wednesday, and there will be a corresponding move, and it'll have to be a pitcher because you can only have 13 pitchers on the roster. So probably either Salazar or Hurt, uh, but you know we'll see. You are you excited about Landon Knack's major league debut? I am excited to see Knack finally, you know, drafted in 2020. He was part of that group of guys for a while that, you know, uh, 2020, what this, they drafted, what, five pitchers, I think, or one, yeah. four pitchers and one position player. I think Jake Vogel maybe was the other guy. But, you know, Beater traded, you know, the, the guys that we've kind of talked about a lot the last year, Clayton Beater got traded, Nick Nashini got traded. He just made his first start for the White Sox the other day, you know. Uh, Nick Frosso got hurt and is out for the season. You know, Gavin Stone's already started pitching. We saw Sheehan last year and, you know, hurt right now, Bobby Miller. Next, kind of that last guy of that group. And Kyle Hurt also has, has pitched for the Dodgers. So he's kind of that last guy. And, you know, excited to see what he can do, you know, whether it's good, bad, you know, uh, figure it out, whatever the case, to give him some innings. Like uh, at this point, they're realistically just looking for some somewhat quality innings. But, He's a guy that could surprise him and, and, and the guy that could, uh, you know, I don't know if he has the dynamic stuff to do kind of what Sheehan did last year when he came up, uh, but he's polished enough to, you know, give them exactly what they need. Yeah, and he had a really good season last year. He's he's only made three starts this year in, in Oklahoma City and has been fine. 
Uh, nothing to write home about, but but pretty good. And 16 strikeouts and 15 and two-thirds innings, only four walks. That's kind of what, what you look at. Um, he did allow one home run. Uh, but, yeah, it's – you know, we got to keep our expectations pretty reasonable for a guy making his major league debut. Uh, most guys don't. Kevin throw Stone six made his major league debut in a midweek day game last year, and it didn't go very well for him, Dodgers but went well for the Dodgers. So, yep, uh, eventually went well for the Dodgers. That was Max Muncy's walk off grand slam on May 2nd, May 3rd last year. Um, Landon Knack, yeah, you know, he probably won't throw six hitless innings like Emmett Sheehan did in his debut, uh, but. Hopefully he can give the Dodgers a little bit of length. If he can go five innings, the Dodgers would love that. And he's gone. He's averaged about five innings in, in his three starts. And, and so if he, he can give him five innings, they would love that because then they do have the arms to get through that. And then they have an off day Thursday to reset a little bit. Don't even have to travel on that off day. So it can be a true rest day for everybody. And with the day game Wednesday, it's, you know, it's almost, you know, almost two days off. Uh, and so, uh, if you are a fan of Dodgers pitching prospects, you're definitely going to want to tune in to this game. Uh, you know, obviously a day game is a little bit harder sometimes to catch if you're working or whatever. Um, I guess, you know, I, I should mention you can listen to it on Sirius XM or the SXM app by searching for Dodgers if you can't watch it. Uh, but hopefully you have uh, some way of watching from your office or, you know, you work from home, have it on in the background. That's what I'll be doing. Um, yeah. So, a, a lot of transactions and a lot of action like in those last couple spots of the roster, you know, the, the main bulk of the roster is staying pretty much the same, but those last couple spots, we've seen a lot of movement there and we'll probably continue to see a lot of movement. We, you know, going into a day, knowing for sure, we're going, ha going to have two transactions, one guy coming up, one guy going down uh, one way or another. And then most likely, Another transaction with Nat going back to the minors in a day or two. Uh, it's going to keep on rotating like this, at least until Walker Bueller comes back. That'll provide some stability. But this bullpen is probably going to be a lot of moving parts all year long. Yeah. And, you know, the Dodgers have worked around the margins of a roster a lot the last few years. It's been a little bit different the way they've had to do it recently, more so than just kind of doing it out of you know here and there but uh yeah we've seen a lot of arms that we hadn't seen before or or hadn't seen in the majors before you know some guys could come back and some guys could not and and uh you know we'll just have to wait and see yeah um i think we covered everything it was a good day for the dodgers bouncing back like i said good offense good pitching you're gonna win games i probably do you know we we may need to mention at some point soon Max Muncy's def defenses look good. He didn't play much today, but when he did come in the game, he immediately made a solid play on defense, and he has been really good. And uh, and I believe Gavin Lux is the only Dodgers infielder without an error this year, right? So yeah. uh, the, the two biggest concerns about the Dodgers defense have not necessarily been huge concerns, so we'll probably dig into that at some point. Uh, you know, Of course, now that I said that, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. But uh, somebody in the YouTube comments yesterday did say – uh, Dodgers have had lousy pitching and making too many errors. And I, I hate to correct people in the YouTube comments, I guess by hate, I mean love. Um, but I did point out to him that the Dodgers have made one error in the last six games. I believe it's one in the last seven. Now they didn't make any errors tonight. I don't think so one error in the last seven games. So the defense has been good since that sloppy series in Chicago. Uh, and even most of those errors got changed to hits later. Um, but it's, uh, defense has been good. If we can get the pitching being consistent and the offense being consistent, hopefully Palhez is going to help with, with that part. And it'll be good. So uh, that'll wrap it up for us today. You got anything else, Vince? Uh, no, unless you have a little quick uh, Carl Erskine story or something. Oh, yeah. I meant to mention Carl Erskine died uh, 97 years old. Carl Erskine uh, played for 11 years with the Dodgers, was a legit – Dodger legend uh, pitched in five or six different World Series, held the record for most strikeouts in a World Series game for about a decade until Sandy Koufax broke that record through two new hitters, uh, two no hitters, spent his whole career with the Dodgers. And after his playing career, the year after he retired, uh, his son was born with Down syndrome. Uh, doctors said he wouldn't make it to age 10, and he died last year at age 63. Uh, and a lot of that was because Carl and his wife uh, 
just devoted their lives to him and to the Special Olympics and uh, changing stigmas around Down syndrome. And Carl Erskine, about 10 years ago, my son uh, sent him a card in the mail, a baseball card in the mail with a little handwritten note and received back an autograph on the card and a handwritten note from Carl Erskine to my son, just uh, talking about how great it was to be a Dodger. And just, uh, I never got to meet him, but everybody who did said he was just the nicest guy in the world. And it's hard to be too sad when a guy lives 97 awesome years and then goes obviously sad for his wife and for his family. Uh, but what a great life and uh, a guy that we can all look up to. Yeah. That'll do it for us for today. Thank you all for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen every weekday morning. Uh, please become an everyday by watching and listening every weekday morning. Please subscribe wherever you're watching and listening right now. You can become a Locked On Dodgers insider by going to joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Dodgers. And you can listen, uh, check out Locked On Sports Today and Locked On Sports Los Angeles over on YouTube, two 24-7 streaming channels there. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Locked On Dodgers. Vince is on Twitter at VinceSense91. I am on Twitter at Snydog. Our DMs are open there. You can also email us, LockedOnDodgers at gmail.com, or send us a voicemail or a text message to 323-863-LOCK5625. We are here every weekday morning. We hope you'll be here with us. When you get in your car or sit on your couch, tell your smart device to play podcast Locked On Dodgers. And remember, you don't have to agree. You just have to listen. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a good one.